Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is number 30, Barbarian Threats. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the orange time period, which we have named Establishment. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Do you have younger brothers and sisters? What happens if you eat a lollipop in front of one of your younger brothers or sisters? Well, I'm a dad and I have five children. I can tell you that when one of our children ate a lollipop or a candy bar in front of any of the other children, then it was a sure thing that they were all going to ask for one for themselves. Our Catholic faith instructs us not to covet what others have, but small children usually have a hard time learning this lesson until they're a little bit older. Well, this is the same thing that happened between the Romans and the Barbarians. The Romans had the lollipops and the candy bars, and the Barbarians wanted them. Okay, okay, the Romans didn't really have lollipops and candy bars, but let me explain what I mean. Over centuries, the Romans had managed to build up a civilization that was unlike anything the world had ever seen before. They made good roads all over their empire. Their cities had paved streets with shops, restaurants, and buildings of all kinds. The roads let them trade things from far away because the empire was so big. Because of all of this, the Romans had so many good things, like food from all over the ancient world, clothes and jewelry, and they had theaters and all kinds of other fun things. But just to the north of the Roman Empire was the Rhine River. The Romans didn't cross this river except just rarely. On the other side of the Rhine River was the land of the Barbarians. The Barbarians didn't have anything at all like the Romans had. They couldn't build paved roads. They couldn't build buildings of concrete and stone like the Romans, as the Barbarians probably lived in rock, wood, or mud huts. They couldn't make weapons like the Romans, and they definitely didn't have all of the amazing food like the Romans did. So what do you think happened when the barbarians looked across the Rhine River and saw the Romans with so many good things? Well, what happened was the same thing your younger brother or sister does when they see you with a lollipop or a candy bar. They either try to grab it from you, or they ask your mom and dad for one also. The barbarians wanted what the Romans had. Now, the thing about the barbarians was that they probably weren't very pleasant to be around. They were rough and crude. In general, they didn't think very far ahead and were probably always looking for something to eat for today and didn't do a very good job of thinking about tomorrow. Eventually, the barbarians did manage to cross the Rhine River and break into the Roman Empire. And when they did, they would go into the Roman towns and villages and break things and just look for food to eat and things to steal. They were very destructive. It's always easier to destroy than it is to create. So the Romans greatly feared the barbarians. The barbarians seemed to have endless numbers, and the Romans were always afraid of them. I bet you already know some of the names of the barbarian tribes. Well, here's Mrs. Charity to explain how many countries in Europe are named after the barbarians who used to live in those lands. Hello, I am Mrs. Charity. There were many different tribes of barbarians. Many of the names of the countries in Europe come from different barbarian tribes. England is named after the barbarian tribe of the Angles. France is named after the barbarian tribe of the Franks. Belgium is named after the barbarian tribe of the Belgi. Switzerland is named after the tribe of the Swiss. And Germany gets its name from the barbarian tribe of the Germani. 
So you see, there is still plenty of evidence of the barbarian tribes that is right in the names of European countries. Welcome back. I have a story for you today. It's a story about the barbarians crossing the Rhine River and eventually destroying the Roman Empire. They came from the north and the east, from the forests and the steppes, from the mountains and the plains. They were the barbarians, the outsiders, the enemies of Rome. They had different names in different languages, in different cultures. They were called the Goths, the Huns, the Vandals, the Franks, the Lombards, the Saxons, and many more. They came in waves, driven by war and famine and migration or ambition. They came as raiders, as invaders, as settlers, and sometimes as friends. They came with swords and axes, with bows and with horses. They came to plunder and to conquer, to trade, or just to live. They came to Rome, the greatest empire the world had ever seen. They came to challenge its power, its authority, its civilization. They came to admire its beauty and its wealth, its culture. They came to learn from its wisdom and its laws. But as the barbarians settled in the Roman Empire, they came into contact with the Catholic Church. It is true that the barbarians destroyed the Roman Empire, which was at the same time a Catholic Empire. The brutal barbarians most likely killed many Catholic priests and burned many Catholic churches because they were violent and destructive. But little did those barbarians know that only in a matter of years, they themselves would all be Catholic. You see, it wasn't too long after the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 that the barbarian king Clovis would be baptized and become a Catholic. Then the entire tribe of the Franks would follow after their king. The church would send out great Catholic missionaries to spread the gospel and convert the barbarians, like the great Saint Boniface who converted the tribes in Germany. So you see, the barbarian invasion might have seemed horrible to the Romans, but God used it for good. Once the barbarians converted to the Catholic faith, they settled down in their new land. They slowly changed and became more and more civilized. In time, they would become kings and knights and peasants in the Middle Ages. In fact, there's a good chance that you are descended from these very same barbarians. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure to come back for our next video, which is about the division of the Roman Empire into the East and the West. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website, www.gloriousheritagecartoons.com, where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.